going to start with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and thank you for your word. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for these beautiful people, Father, that you brought to worship you and to seek your face and to hear your words. And I thank you, Father God, that you'll say what you want said and do what you want done. And that I would be a willing vessel to flow through me, Father, this day. Amen. And Lord, we not ever cease to give you the thanks, the glory, and the honor yes, Lord. for all you've done and continue to do. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Judges chapter 6, and we're going to begin with verse 11. Amen. This is about Gideon. Remember Gideon? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And there came an angel of the Lord, yes. sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah. That pertained unto Joash the Abiserite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. He was concerned that he, the enemy would see him doing that, so he was hiding them. It's pretty sad, isn't it? Yep. The angel of the Lord, verse 12, appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now Gideon's afraid and threshing over by the wine press because there was no more wine, no more grapes. Mm -hmm. So he thought that's the least place they look. And so he was hiding. And here comes God and says, you're blessed. Mm -hmm. The Lord's with you, you mighty man of valor. Amen. And so Gideon's response was a, a pretty normal one, I would say, at that day and that age. Verse 13, Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord. If the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles? Which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the enemy, or the Midianites. Now, there's a phrase that I want you to take hold of out of this, which is what we're going to talk about. Is where be all his miracles? Gideon wanted to know if you're with me, where's all that I've heard of? Obviously, that these things had been written down where the, and told and retold through the ages, the miraculous, miraculous events that God had performed, yeah. such as Egypt, bringing them out of Egypt, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so he says, if you're with me, where are all these miracles? Hallelujah. Verse 14, the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So God is commissioning Gideon here. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. I don't have any money to go save people. To save. And I'm the least in my father's house. I'm not anybody that going to listen to you. You ever heard those excuses when God tells you to do something? Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's two good ones. I mean, yeah. the devil uses that to stop a lot of ministries. Yes. Now that I don't have no money to do it, God, and who am I to even try? Yep. Right? right. Lying devil. Yeah. Verse 15. He said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? My family is poor, and I'm the least of my father's house. Verse 16. The Lord said to him, Surely I'll be with you. Isn't that enough? That's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Surely I'll be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Verse 18, Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, and eleven cakes of ephah of flour, the flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it unto him under the oak, and presented it. The angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh of the unleavened cakes and lay them upon the rock, this rock. And pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out of the rock. Whoa. And consumed the flesh and, and the un unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for behold, I have seen an angel. Hallelujah. 
Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, for behold, I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, called it Jehovah Shalom. And to this day it is yet an Ophrah of the of Israelites. Well, that's a pretty good miracle if he laid the flesh and the cakes on the rock and then poured the broth over it to wet it down. So it wasn't just from the heat of the rock that would ignite something there. But God took the uh, staff, touched it, and poof, yeah. boom. That's a miracle. Yeah. What are you saying? That's a yeah. miracle. Oh, yeah. Well, Gideon had just said, where are the miracles that I've heard about but I'm not seeing? And so he showed him one. In the commission, he showed him one in order to say to him, I'm with you. I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, in this lesson today, there are three questions that I would say. One is, where are the miracles today in the church? Yeah. Number two, why don't we see them more? They do see some. And the third question is, why do we need them? Miracles, that is. Why, why do we need them? Well, a lot of theologians have explained them away, explained them right out of the church. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't think they need them anymore because they've got wisdom. They've got <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> they, they've got the Bible. Some teach they got the Bible. And uh, the Bible is it. They don't need anything more. Well, you do need the Bible, that's for sure. But you need the Holy Ghost with the Bible to be able to understand the Bible Amen. and for the miraculous to right. confirm the Bible. That's right. right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, a miracle is defined in dictionary.com. I just looked it up on the computer. Dictionary.com says an effect or ordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. And then... The other definition is a wonder or a marvel. A wonder is talked about in the Bible. Marvel is, uh, we think of as something awesome, me, out of this world. Hallelujah. Well, the Blue Letter Bible, blueletterbible.org on the computer, says that it's used in this way. The, the, the Greek word is for miracle. Is used in these ways as a sign or a mark or a token. Okay, that's how it's used. Yeah. That by which a person or a thing is distinguished from others and is known. The, the, the word miracle we're talking about. A sign, prodigy, portent. An unusual occurrence transcending the common cause of nature. Of signs portending remarkable events soon to happen. I'm telling you all the things the way it's used in the New Testament. And this one is my favorite. Of miracles and wonders by which God authenticates the men sent by him. Or by which men prove that the cause they are pleading is God. Let me read you that one again. Yeah. Now, you can look this up. I just copied it. Uh, Blueletterbible.org. The, the, the Greek word, hallelujah, I wrote it down somewhere. The Greek word is S-E-M-E-I-O-N. But it's pr pronounced with a long A, Sameon. Sameon. That's as close as I'm going to get. You'll have to go there. When you click on the little guy there, the recording, he'll read it for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So anyway, but that Greek word, listen now, in Blue Letter Bible, it says, it means, or is used in this way, of miracles and wonders by which God authenticates the men sent by him. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, isn't that what he was just showing to Gideon, him that I am? touched it, poof, it went up in flames. Hallelujah. Isn't that what he showed when he sent Moses into Pharaoh yep. and did the miracles? Yep. He's just showing the 
authenticating that Moses is who was sent yeah. by God. Bigger right. than the demons and devils that they yeah. had been worshiping. Oh. Hallelujah. It also says, by which men prove that the course that they are pleading, that the cause, I'm sorry, that they are pleading is God's. So it backs up what you're saying. Hallelujah. Well, look in Acts chapter 2. Acts, the second chapter. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 2. We're going to read verse 22 if you're already there. It says, You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So we see here, again, God authenticating the God-man, Jesus the Christ, of whom he sent. Hallelujah. How? With the miraculous. Miracles. Glory to God. Well, look in Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. God wants to authenticate your ministry. Glory to God. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs. Now that word signs there is the exact Greek word that's used for miracles. This sameon. How we say? Alright? So, these miracles shall follow them that believe. That's how you can read that. Right? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Do, you, do you see that? Yes. What a juicy nugget. These miracles shall follow believers. Amen. Real believers. Yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Not just playing church believers. Yeah. Not just the church club of Sunday morning, and that's all believers. But real believers. These miraculous signs will follow you. Yeah. Well, what are they? My name, they'll cast out devils. They'll get rid of demonic forces when they meet up with them. Speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. You know how many people are still afraid of tongues? You know how many people we've lost in this church alone because we openly speak in tongues in here? Yep. Hallelujah. I, I think we'll have to change the mic. This one. Okay. Praise the Lord. And, and, and we're, I'm, we're not as vocal with tongues as some churches I've been in, but we are vocal with them because I'm not going to hinder the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tongues is actually a miracle event yeah. in believers' lives. I'll show you that, 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Hallelujah. And so if, if people are afraid of it, that's because they're afraid. They don't understand the moving of the Spirit. Yes, yes. They don't understand the miraculous. But at least you caught their attention. Yes. And then they have to make a decision from there what they're going to do with it. Right. You know, that's what happened with Pharaoh. When Moses approached Pharaoh and he did the miraculous signs, well, Pharaoh had to choose. Yes. Am I going to believe that this man is sent from God and this sign is from God? Or am I going to choose to believe my gods and go my way. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what the miraculous does. Mm -hmm. When people are faced with a miracle, they'll either explain it away, or they'll just reject it altogether, mm -hmm. or they'll embrace it and follow God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, so, these Miracles shall follow them that believe. Verse 17. In my name they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with tongues, they'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. 
Now look at this, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with miracles following. That word signs is the Greek word sameon, which means miracle. Same thing as miracles. Yeah. So the Lord was working with them. He was with them and confirming the, sign, the word with miracles or signs following. We serve a miracle God. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Miracles are to be embraced, not run from, not afraid of. Hallelujah. No. <laughs> Now, let me point out here, since I read this, and I've said it many times before, and I'll say it again. We, as believers, do not follow miracles. Nope. They follow us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's true. To confirm the word. Okay. That's right. We do not chase miracles no. or signs. But, in fact, the miraculous will follow us, the believer, yes. to confirm the word. God is and always has been a miracle-working God. I don't care what modern theologians might say. I don't care what church denominations might teach. Hallelujah. God is a miracle-working God on earth today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look in John, the 20th chapter. John chapter 20. John 20 and verse 30 says, this is referring to Jesus, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. And that word signs again is miracles. In this case, not every word translated signs is miracles. You have to get that blue letter Bible or concordance to figure out which is which, okay? can't just blanket it because I've taught you that these signs, the ones that I've mentioned, mean miracles. That doesn't mean everyone in the Bible mm -hmm. does. Right. Okay? Otherwise, you'll get off base here a little. But this one does. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Yes. Glory to God. It says, many other miracles Jesus did. Many other. Well, we have quite a few in here, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they're wonderful to read and to study and research. But there are many others, the Bible said. Yes. And so much so, John 21, look over at John 21. Verse 25 said, there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one... I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we serve a miracle working God. Somehow, some way, it got left out through the ages. But according to this, when Jesus walked, we see a small glimpse of it. But if all the books in the world won't hold it, there was a lot of miracles going on every day. Amen. Hallelujah. So, where are the miracles? Look in Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11, beginning with verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments always. And know ye this day, verse 2, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, his stretched out arm, verse 3, and his miracles, and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land. He's telling you here that, verse 1, we need to love God. And in loving God means we obey God. We, we, pursue, we pursue God. God is first and foremost in our life. Hallelujah. Verse 4, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, he's just going over, rehearsing it before them, 
unto their horses, to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you. These are miracle events he's named. How the Lord had destroyed them unto this day, and what he did unto you in the wilderness until you came into this place, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliam, the son of Reuben. How the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. That's a pretty good miracle. Yes, Lord. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you be strong, you may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whether you go to possess it. That you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. So here, the reason there are no miracles today is because there is no word. And miracles follow the word. Amen. I'm talking in general. Amen. I know there are patches of churches that preach the word. But if you look at the overall thing, I don't know what a lot of them are preaching this morning. They have a lot of philosophy. Some of them don't even bother to open the Bible. Some don't bother to bring a Bible. That's right. Some people, it's an amazing thing. Some people have gone through uh, school, all the way through college, earned degrees, some of them high degrees, and are not even born again in the pulpits today. And then we ask, where are the miracles? Well, the first miracle is salvation. And if the leader doesn't have it, you're in trouble. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, so, miracles, we said, Mark 16, 20, confirm the word, don't they? Yeah. If the word is preached, there will be confirming signs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. There just will be. <clears throat> Why? Because God won't lie. Well, the reason, the root reason, look in Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Y'all still with me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 17, verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Why couldn't we do this miracle? Hallelujah. Well, a demon coming out is a miracle, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, you can't medicate it out. <laughs> you can sedate it, but you can't medicate it out. You can't beat it out. You can beat them up all you want, but it won't drive that devil out. You can't clean them up enough to get it out. Right? Driving out a demon is a miraculous event. It's not by man, it's by God. We speak the word, the demon comes out because God does it. Backing up what we say as his men and women call of him to do these works. Right? So they said here, why couldn't we do it, Lord? Why couldn't we do this miracle? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Do I need to go any further? Because of your unbelief. Well, people say, oh, Pastor, you insult me. You make me mad telling me it's unbelief. You're, you're making it look like it's my fault. Well, well. Hmm. it's not God's fault. Okay. I know it is offensive because we're in an age where it's a feel-good preaching out here today. Make me feel good or don't even preach, Pastor. <coughs> yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Well, you will feel good if you walk in the will of God. Not sure. It won't be a fake feel good. Right. Amen. It'll be reality. Yeah. And the way to please God is by faith. But here he said, you couldn't do it because of unbelief. Listen, that is not to criticize, that's not to condemn, that's not to make us feel bad, that's yeah. not to make us feel like, oh, no, I'll never make it, I'm a terrible person. Well, that's all the devil thought. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Get that devil off your shoulder and out of your ear for sure. Yeah. And 
and say, recognize, if God said something and it's not working the way God said it, you don't see the miraculous flowing the way God said it would flow and that you see it flowing in the Bible, then it's not God's fault. It's got to be on our end. Yeah, that's right. Not to make us feel bad or, or give up and quit or any of those things the devil tried to do, but to make us gird up our loins and get into seeking God and find out why. Well, so where are the miracles? They're not here because there's unbelief. Now, when I'm saying here, I'm not meaning referring to this immediate body. I'm talking about the overall. Why do they have more miracles in third world countries than we do in America? Well, they are in the word every day, but they don't have the modern conveniences that we have to depend on either. I mean, here, if some little pain or something goes wrong with me, I've got insurance, I've got money, I can run right down there. What do I need to do anything else for? What am I going to get it fixed? But I'm telling you, the way my wife grew up, if you didn't know how to get healed, you'd die. Because you got no money and there's no government assistance to see you through to the physician. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now, thank God we live in a country where we have these resources, but don't abuse them. Yeah. Don't let it steal your faith. Right. I'm so very thankful because a lot of people would be dead today if we didn't have these things. Yeah. Amen. But what I'm saying is don't let it steal your faith from you. Right. Still walk in your faith. Right. If you need to go, you go. Thank God we got it to go, too. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And trust me, if I need it, I'm going to go. Amen. Amen. And if you need it, you call me saying, you got such and such, I'm going to tell you, go. <laughs> Don't even think twice. Just go do it. Get it done. God doesn't want you hurting. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. So don't go out here today telling you I'm preaching against the doctor. I'm not. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for good doctors, especially Christian ones. Yeah. So why don't we see them? Why don't we see these miracles? Well, it's very similar to the answer to where are the miracles. Yeah. Romans 10 to 17 said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Yeah. Well, it's not enough to just hear it. That's right. Look in James chapter 1. You know, God can be telling you, don't go here, don't go there, right. do go there, and you can be so... Uh, hardened to the voice of God yeah. that you just go anyway. That's true. Yeah. And you're walking into a problem. Hallelujah. Learn to be sensitive to the voice of God. Yeah. He'll come to you in dreams. Yeah. He'll come to you when you're reading the Word. Most of the time when you're reading the Word, He's going to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. You'll hear God's voice. Now, mo when you first start, unless you really won't recognize it so much, but God's grace will help you maneuver through it. But as you look back and you reconcile these things, you'll see when God has spoken to you, mm -hmm. miss it or get it, you'll still see where he's spoken to you, and you'll learn that voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And it may save your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just really a may. Yeah. If you'll obey it, yeah. it will save your life. Yeah. But you've got to be a doer of the word. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Look at this. Deceiving your own self. If you're just amening the word and not doing the word, you have deceived yourself. Mm -hmm. And guess what? With that, you'll not see any confirming signs and wonders. Why? There's no doing of the word. Third thing, why do we need them? Why do we need miracles today? Well, let me give you the first reason here. John chapter 6. I'll give you as many as I can. I'm out of time. John chapter 6. And verse 2 says, And the great multitude followed him, Jesus, 
because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Hallelujah. We ask, why would we need miracles today? Aside from what I've already told you, here, this says, great multitudes will be drawn to him. Truly. People are looking for the miraculous today. They look for it in the occult. They pay big money for the, the uh, card readers and the tarot card readers and the palmist. They, they, they seek out to, to see the unknown, the unseen, the supernatural. Well, that's, I believe that is really a, a desire built by God in us. It's just they don't channel it right. Yeah. They channel it after the wicked side. Because there is a supernatural wicked side. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But we have to channel it to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And a great multitude. You want a lot of people in church here? Listen to the Holy Ghost and obey. And let the miracles of God flow in these services. Word will get around town. There's some action going on at Faith International. Amen. Oh, yeah. There'll also be those that'll scoff at us. Yeah. And they'll leave out of here saying, oh, wow. I don't want nothing to do with them. I'm sad for them, but that's their prerogative. I can't make them open their eyes. Well, we've got to have the miraculous in our services today, don't we? We have to. We, have to. we need it. We have to have it. Yes. It's, it's a, one of the primary things. There are more than this, but there are. It's one of the primary things that separates us from being just a religion. The miraculous. There's plenty of clubs that meet this morning yeah. around town. I'm talking about religious clubs. No action, no power of God, no soul saving, no nothing. But they meet and they appease their conscience. Right. Make it feel like they've done their service for God this week. I'm telling you, they have to hire a policeman at the Catholic Church on 75th Street. They do the traffic. There's so many people in yeah. the church. It's really amazing. Miracles magnify our God. You know that, right? Yes. They magnify God. Yes. Glory to God. It makes him alive and real yes. to a lost and dying people. It's what they're after. They're looking for reality. Somebody that can help them. That's right. That's right. Not just a sympathetic sympathy. Jesus didn't have sympathy. He had compassion. Yes. And there's a huge difference. Yes. He didn't just wallow in the sympathy with the people. Oh, I'm so sorry they died. I don't know what to do. I'm with you, though. That's not. You'll never see that in the Bible. Instead, he said, quit the morning and raise them up. Amen. Amen. Or stop the, the little widow lady with her son. But she needed it. Stop the funeral. That's right. He didn't cry and walk along and march. No. Oh, I'm with you, ma'am. No. I mean, that's what some people have an idea that we're supposed to do. It's compassion. You're supposed to take authority in the situation and let's have the miraculous happen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what Jesus does. Yes. Do the word and he'll confirm it. Glory to God. Let me just name you a couple of things, then I've got to quit. It's already four minutes over. Makes people hungry. Remember Luke 23 and 8, Herod wanted to see Jesus because he heard of all the miracles. So he wanted to see a miracle. Herod, he was a bad guy. But it still, even in Herod, created a desire to go in that presence of that anointing. You hear what I'm saying? If, if, if we want to see this church grow, if we want to see it blossom, we've got to hear God yeah. and obey God yeah. Yeah. and let God have his way yeah. without fear. Yeah. Let the power of God move in our service. Ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, 
You know, Brother Hagin used to say that healing was the dinner, the dinner bell to call the people unto God. And just ring the dinner bell and everybody would come to dinner. And that, that's a good way to look at it because that's exactly, the healing is a miracle. And that's exactly what we're talking about. It'll draw them in. Thank you. Hallelujah. What, what, you can't get a seat in Benny Hens meetings. You have to sit out and watch it on the TV unless you get there way early. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? He's known for miracles. Yep. People want miracles. What if we had that start going on here? Yeah, Why not? You don't have to have the name Benny Hinn to do that. You just got to act on the word of God. In faith. Believing it's the same God of Benny Hinn as it is of you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's see what else I want to tell you. Just consider this. The entire plan of God is a miracle from beginning to end. From the very beginning through today all the way to the end. It's a miracle. It's all a miracle. For us with Jesus, started with the miraculous virgin birth. Luke 2 and 12 mentions this. That was a miracle. Well, a lot of them taking that out of the church. They don't even believe that. That's right. Uh, Bill said, the one down the road that he used to go to, Bill Refiller, that he asked him something about Adam and Eve, and the, the preacher said to him, You don't really believe that story, do you? That's just a, a, a Bible story. This is a big church, right in our community, that the pastors told him this. Yes. Okay, so the virgin birth is a miracle. Your birth, I'm talking about your spiritual birth, the new birth. Yes. It's a miracle. Amen. Yes. Tongues is a miracle. Yes. You can read that in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. When you speak in tongues, it's a miracle happening. You're not speaking in the tongues. God in you by your spirit comes forward with a language. You don't even have no idea what you're saying. That's right. If that's not a miracle, I don't know what it is. Amen. I can ride down the road on the way to work and I can be speaking in tongues and counting in my head on my cruise control what I want to get it to. Why? It's the spirit doing it and bypassing the mind. Amen. That's a miracle. Yeah. Amen. You can't do that with regular talking and thinking. That's right. You think about what you say. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank I'm you. telling you, we're a miracle people. Yeah. You can't take the miraculous out of this. God is a miracle God. We're a miracle people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Healing's a miracle. Your financial provision is a miracle. Yes. Forgiveness is a miracle, like this South Carolina thing. That's a miracle. Yes, it is. Love is a miracle. For natural man to love somebody is a miracle. Unsaved man doesn't know how to love. They can't. They only love themselves. But when you get saved, that changes. Yeah. It's no longer I on the throne. That's you start right. loving others and concerned for them. Yeah. Amen. What a miracle. It was always me, myself, and I before. Yeah. Yep. Something changed. <laughs> and the last but not least is answered prayer. Anytime you get an answer to your prayer, when you yeah. pray God's way, when you pray in your closet, I'm not talking about this garbage where you send out letters and you tell everybody and their brother what you're praying for and then expect them to meet that prayer need. That's not answered prayer. No. Yeah. That's, right. That's people feeling bad or, or catching something you've got. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put God to it. If he said go in your closet and pray for what things you need, why don't you enter into that closet and quit broadcasting what you're praying about? Amen. I'll tell you why. Because you expect people to meet your need instead of God. Hallelujah. A, a real answer to prayer, to real prayer, is a miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's been plenty of times I would like to pick up the phone and say, we need some help. Yeah, right. There's been plenty of times I've been tempted to write a little email. 
our little letter and say, we got this vision going on here. We want to do this. But then how do I know whether it's really God that did it and called me to that or, or if it's the people wanting to see it happen with me? Well, one sure way to tell is that nobody knows but God himself. When he funds it, you know it's from God. It's from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now well, look at this. Look at what the, if you understand the miraculous, look at what it opens to you. Number one, nothing, no thing is any longer impossible. Amen. Because you're no longer bound by Thank natural you, man's Hallelujah. ways and evidences and circumstances. Yeah. You walk in the miraculous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Circumstances, we sang it this morning, take their shackles off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. You take them off when you get into this miraculous realm. Yeah. Thank you, God. No natural event is not overcomable anymore. If you walk in this supernatural, this miraculous realm, it's there for you. God is no respecter of persons. It's yours. That's right. Now, what I think we'll do in the coming weeks, as the Holy Spirit leads, it's his decision, but it seems like the Lord would have us, to look at the miracles <coughs> of Jesus Amen. and study them, yes. get a grip on them, so we can walk in those. So he said, greater works than these you're going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready for it. You ready? Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Let's stand up. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go over. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what I'd like to offer you in this moment here is maybe you need the prayer agreement to shake off some circumstance, some evidence, some problem in your life. You need a miracle today is what I'm saying. You want to get rid of it and get the miraculous flow. If that's you... I'm certainly happy to pray with you and agree with you. I just ask you to step out of your chair and come up front here. And I'll step down. I don't even need to know what it is. I'm just going to come lay hands on you and agree with you. And when I agree with you, we believe.